Welcome everyone to the Philosophy 15 video series. I am Robert Talese. This is my colleague, Scott Aiken. And today we're changing things up a bit. We have a guest, John Casey from Northeastern Illinois University. Uh, Scott and I, as you know, are the authors of Why We Argue and How We Should, a guide to political disagreement. And John here is a expert uh, in informal logic. And so uh, we thought that we would do a episode of our video series on uh, some variations on the classic straw man fallacy, particularly something that uh, John and Scott in particular have been talking about, which is called the Iron Man fallacy. So straw man and Iron Man. John, what's up with that? Well, there's more, actually. It's not just Straw Man and Iron Man. <laughs> there's lots of men. <laughs> there's lots of men, and that's actually kind of a thing we could talk about. But um, when it, it, there's a, a moment in a person's life when they're confronted with other people's beliefs. And that's a very special moment. And <laughs> you, are, you are forced to confront the reality of somebody having a different view. And there are three, what I call the way of the sophist. There are three things you can say to yourself with regard to that other person's beliefs. You can consider that other person unworthy, that's the ad hominem. You can change the subject, and that would be something like a red herring. Or you can re-characterize their view. And there are lots of ways to do that, and that's the straw man. So the straw man, uh, as, as Rob mentioned, has a number of different forms. The simplest and most straightforward, this called the classic straw man, is a straightforward distortion of someone's argument. Uh, frequently, this is preceded by a phrase like, "Oh, I see what you're saying," and then a person offers a reconstruction. It's like <laughs> that's not what I was saying, though. <laughs> that's, that wasn't it at all. So and that, that's the that's the straightforward call it the distortion form. Um, a second form of straw manning is slightly more subtle. I call it for the it's it called the weak man. This is for the more intellectually honest person who is at least concerned to find a view that's an actual view to criticize. So they'll imagine uh, most arguments have a lot of participants. Uh, consider your average Facebook argument has a lot of participants. Finding the least worthy and least in our least articulate representative of a point of view, and then thoroughly rigorously and logically demolishing their 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 point of view is the weak man. Now that leaves standing a lot of other views and of course the suggestion is or the implication is that the um, the view is defeated or and there are others which we can talk about. The final view is is a kind of a contrastive view when you don't have uh, an opponent an opponent you make one up. <laughs> you have to, this is the hollow man. And now this, this is often, not always, but often preceded by something like, well, there are some who argue, and then out comes some crazy argument, which nobody can, and the beautiful thing about the hollow man is there's nobody there to answer for it. Now, so those are all distortions, and distortion is, it seems like it should always be bad, even though um, there are lots of reasons, and Scott and I have written on this, uh, for, for, distorting arguments for virtuous ends. Um, I, somewhat like the on the reverse end of straw manning is what we have called the Iron Man. Now the Iron Man is to take a view that's weak, so consider any of those three examples, is to take one of those and twist it to make it stronger. Now this has the the, the, the effect of of making the critic look like a fool. Because the critic has attacked a weak argument, but you have misrepresented the the uh, the object of the critic's attack, thus the Iron Man. And as a fallacy, then, so the Iron Man has a distortion, and on its face, it looks like Iron Manning is a good strategy. You might right. say you want to take on the best version. Oh, of absolutely, your yeah. Views. Um, but it looks like Iron Manning has, you might say, downstream consequences. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a dialectical downstream consequence, which mm -hmm. is that you effectively then straw man the critics of the Iron Man d views, the right. previously bad view that you Iron Maned. Right. So you'd say the critic then it looks like the person who gets straw manned when you Iron Man the view. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
that's the, 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 one of the problems with the Iron Man. Another problem with the Iron Man is that it has immediate effects on people offering arguments because there is a feature of argument evaluation that is ad hominem in its essence. You are evaluating people's capacity for making arguments. If nobody's really on the hook for the actual argument they made, but you constantly improve it, you're not helping them. Now, uh, so this is a, there's a kind of a moral, so that's the moral hazard right. version of this concern. Um, but it looks like, it looks like you could say, I mean, so I can imagine someone's pushing back and saying, but that may be a temporary state, right? Like you, you do this in the classroom, for example, mm -hmm. right? You, one of your students may come out with a sort of a not so well stated version mm -hmm. of an objection to a view, and you say, "Oh, you know, you're, you're reading Descartes' Meditations," and they say, "Well, it looks like, looks like you had to have assumed the clarity and distinctness rule to get the clarity and distinctness rule." And you're like, "Ah, this is Arnaud's circle," and you run Arnaud, right? <laughs> right? And you say, "Well, that wasn't exactly what Billy had in mind." Um, is but in some ways, isn't there a kind of maybe another downstream element, a kind of an ethotic improvement that you say you exemplify good reasoning and good argument whenever you Iron Man and you say, well, you make them dependent, but maybe they're just dependent for a while. Well, yeah, definitely. And I think that would be indexed to context. Great. A uh, okay. classroom situation where the whole idea is improvement. A certain amount of Iron Manning is pretty much required. And also, by the way, uh, a certain amount of straw manning, I think it's impossible and this point has been made uh, 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 by uh, Brian Ribeiro, yeah. it's impossible really to teach philosophy or teach anything really without teaching it in a very simplified form. And even just offering really easy, easily knocked down versions of Descartes is a, is a, is a, um, is a kind of straw manning. Now, it, for the same reason, you improve people's views in class that aren't really maybe stated as well as it could be. Um, now, hopefully, that the 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 object of that distortion understands that it's an improvement, or hopefully not. I'm not really sure. Actually, that's a good yeah, point. That's a and, and isn't it kind of difficult? I mean, uh, Rob and I, you, we've talked about this this point before, where where we want, where on the one hand, there's clearly a contrastive element to all of the arguments. So this is a kind of a Mills point. Um, but if you're constantly going out and finding contrasts that are way too easy to make, right, right, right. where you'd say, well, yeah, I know my opposition, and I've kind of chosen the dumb ones, right? <laughs> right. Um, is there, uh, clearly it looks like uh, uh, the context can, are you really straw, maybe I'll put it this way, are you really straw manning whenever you say, hey, the context requires that I give you a simple version for you to knock down. Right, right. right. Is that really straw manning? So we, we kind of asked a version of this question. Right. Can, I, yeah. can I ask a, a, a different kind of question maybe that, that will lead to this about the Iron Man? Um, how much of the badness of Iron Manning depends on the audience to the dialectic, which is diachronic, um, kind of tuning in and tuning out, right? I mean, it looks as if the badness of the if the badness of the Iron Man is that it makes straw men of critics prior to the Iron Man version, or it makes them look like critics. Um, how much of the badness of that depends on? the audience just not being able to track that the Iron Man version is just an upgraded version. It's just the next step somebody takes in a dialectic when they're looking to improve a view. Um, how much of it does it depend on them not you know, sort of tuning in and tuning out? Or is it just whenever you give a new and improved version of a view, are you mistreating the critics of the... The, the prior views that you've been, the versions of the view that you've that you've sought to improve upon. So I think that um, I'll, I'll, let me jump in. So I think that uh, I think that a lot of straw manning for it to be rhetorically effective depends on audience ignorance or audience failure to track a lot of these sorts of things. So often I think whenever you conclude an argument, what you're doing is you're not just concluding the series of speech acts that you've just um, uh, uttered, 
uh, or made a series of utterances that you've done and, and the series of speech acts that you've performed, that series of speech acts is also supposed to have a kind of cumulative effort. So whenever you conclude, you say, and that's the conclusion of not just the argument that I made, but like the updated state of affairs as to where the dialectic is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that whenever you straw man, uh, that depends on your audience not sort of being able to see the details and things like that. And I presume that Iron Manning works the same way, where it's like, look, it's in some ways it's an it's a straw man of you might say the critic, uh, especially if you might say you leave it hanging, right? If you if there's an implicature to it. Uh, sometimes people have Iron Man in order to straw man critics, mm -hmm. right? This is a case, right. an example that John had yeah. given before. Mm -hmm. Did you want to run? Uh, um. Well, no, I think you're 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 right on the money there. The 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 nature of these audiences is you, you don't have their attention for the long stretch. So you come in at one point with a uh, um, you come in with a uh, with a straw man. That's just enough. That's just enough for the your people who are inclined to that point of view. They're satisfied. Um, and the same with the Iron Man. It's like you know. So let some politician comes out, says something incoherent. You come out, re recast it, and that's enough. That's enough to make the critics look bad, and the critics look look. Uh, the critics look like they're straw manning. Right. Right. So arguably, this is what Sean Spicer's job is. Yes. That's right. right. Yeah. Right. That's right. I see. So. And there's yeah the sort of B cable A and B team. In the evening, they run the iron and straw men to clean up the day's mess on, on the various participants. That's right. That's what the Sunday morning talk yeah, shows. Sunday are. morning, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So Iron Manning, then just to use this example, when Spicer says that's not what he said, mm -hmm. and then gives a version of what he said that is some cl cleaned up interpretation mm -hmm. that. Omits words and yeah. you know and all the rest. Right. Um, it introduces. It's not marks. a ban. Right. Yeah. Right. Or he was by wiretap right. and quotes. He meant just surveillance. Right. right. Then he it didn't does, mean it didn't mean Obama climbed in time yeah, right. Trump yeah. Tower and yeah. put wires in. Right. Then it's yeah. it's That's offered a, as a way of of impugning the dialectical performances of mm -hmm. the, the critic, reporters. The who've already been talking mm. about the story. Right. So, and by the oh, way, this connects, this connects up with something also that we've been talking about, which is that it looks like spitballing requires and depends on right. a background of Iron Manning that you say, look, mm -hmm. I depend on Iron Manners yes. to be able to make the spitballs stick. Right. Yes. Uh, people will respond, people will then Iron Man, and all the people who have responded critically then end up with spitballs or something on yeah. their face. Right? <laughs> right, and it is a confirmation of um, a certain line of m media criticism that the media is being unfair to mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. when the president is constantly saying things that n stand in need of Iron Manning mm -hmm. after the fact that after the press has criticized the president for what it looks like he said. Mm -hmm. What he says always has a little escape hatch that enables the Iron Manor to come in and not only interpret the statement in a way that makes the prior criticisms irrelevant, but also feeds into the critique of the media, that the media has been doing something deliberate. Right. Yeah, there's a larger narrative in the background that it feeds into and is evidence for it. Well, thanks, folks. Philosophy 15. Thank you, John Casey. Thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.